Hi there and welcome to Scrap and Coffee. I've made a storage box for the Home Again mini album. And as you can see it's a pretty basic box that measures 10 and a quarter by 4 inches. And the lid is of course a little bit bigger. Uh, I've used my uh, design paper that I had left to decorate and I kept it pretty simple. Only on the front I made an acetate window so you can see the album inside. And I've used some stickers and chipboard pieces that I had left from the collection to embellish it a little bit. As you can see the album fits in there pretty perfect but you can still easily reach in there to get it out and uh, in this video I will show you the first part of the construction for this box So you need five uh, chipboard pieces for the bigger uh, part of the box and the big pieces measure seven and a quarters by ten and a quarters. You need two side panels that measure seven and a quarters by four inches and one bottom that measures four inches by ten and a quarter. And you're going to need some one inch strips with some double sided tape on the back and a score line in the middle. On one of the bigger pieces we are going to make a frame and for that I draw a line one and a quarter inch from top and bottom and one and a half inches from the sides and I'm going to cut out that middle frame. I've prepared that already and then we can place a piece of acetate on there and I will place the measurements for it in the description box. Also I cut a piece of uh, cardstock that was a quarter of an inch smaller than the chipboard piece and I'm going to line it up with the chipboard piece with a 1 8 of an inch border and then I will be turning the piece around so I can draw the frame with a pencil just trace it and using my ruler I will make that frame on all four sides 1 8 of an inch larger so I will draw a line outwards on the piece So when you've done that on all four sides, I just erase the inner line here, uh, but you don't really have to do it. It's just to make sure for yourself that you cut on the right line. So you're going to cut on the outside line. I've used my paper trimmer here. You can also use a utility knife if you want to. And here I changed my blade because I had my dull blade in there for the chipboard. And so um, I'm just going to start cutting on the intersections of the pencil marks. And it was a little hard for me to see, so... Uh, I wasn't perfect with my paper trimmer, so I cut all four sides just to cut that frame out actually. And then I had to clean up uh, the edge, uh, the corners with my utility knife because I wasn't able to see and I was rather safe than sorry. So when, once I've done that I can take it out. And then when you place this on your chipboard, you will see that you have a nice 1 8 of an inch frame on the inside of your chipboard frame actually. So you, um, you are sure you don't have any overlapping of cardstock. So this I'm going to lay aside for, the, for now. I just wanted to have prepared um, to start with. And now I'm going to clean up my edges of the frame by placing one of the, uh, I used two strips, the one inch strips and I actually did the same thing as I did on my cover piece. I'm going to um, start in the middle of the frame on the bottom and I'm going to make sure that my score line on my cardstock is lining up with my chipboard in the frame. And you want to make sure that you really get that strip in the corners. So I'm using um, one of the cricket pieces, uh, I'm not sure, it's like a bone folder to get it in there. This piece has a really nice thin edge so you can really use it to get it in the corner. And then you just follow along on the chipboard and you do the same in the other corner. And just follow along with that score line. Try to keep that aligned with your chipboard.
and then we can um, cut on the corners of the cardstock so we can get that little piece fold over and you can cut both sides at the same time if you want uh, here I try to fold it first but you can better just fold the little pieces first so just cut it on both sides and just fold that little piece over by pulling on it slightly and again I try to fold it but it's just better to do the same thing on the other side first and my daughter was giving me a visit here so pull on that a little bit and now you can fold over your uh, other pieces because you have that score line that goes pretty easy so I just fold on all three sides and when I've done that I give it a quick burnish with my bone folder just make sure you have a nice stick and a nice clean edge So for the second strip I'm going to do the same thing and I'm not going to overlap it I'm just going to bump it up against the first strip now for me as a result I could still see some black um, while I was constructing my box and I was kind of in doubt if it was better to do it with overlapping but that gives you more bulk and now that the box is finished I actually I don't see it anymore I think if you look for it you will be able to see it but that's just not what your focus is on so for me it's not a problem that you can still it's not as clean as you might have wanted everywhere but I think the bulk from overlapping is worse so after we've placed both strips I'm going to place some double-sided tape around the perimeter of the acetate I've used quarter of an inch tape and we can place it on the frame And I've done it on the acetate only this time. Give it a good burnish so you get a nice stick. Make sure you don't burnish on your acetate too much so you don't damage it. And then we can remove all the tape backing. And when you place it, just be careful that you don't have any overhanging of your tape. So take your time on placing your acetate on there you can cut it a little bit bigger if you want just to be safe and then again when it's on there I give it a, a gentle burnish on the tape only and then now I've placed this piece of cardstock but um, that will mean that you are going to see your construction strips in a later stadium well it's the inside of the box so uh, for me it's not a big problem uh, but if it is a problem for you then don't place this piece right now place it on a later stadium when your construction part is finished however with this window it's pretty difficult to place it uh, where you want it so it's easier to place it now and that's why I've done it uh, but yeah that means you can see your construction strips on the end of it so take that in mind you can wait with this one and as you will see later on, I've tried to uh, remove it with some undo to get the strip under there, but it wasn't working and I've just decided that, well, it's the inside of the box, so it wasn't a big problem for me. So try to line it up. And I'm more worried about the inside frame than lining it up with the outside of the chipboard. As you can see, it's not completely straight lined up with the outside, but uh, to me it was more important to get it lined up with the inside frame and I just used the part where more chipboard is showing on the bottom where I'm going to place the construction strip so here I'm placing the bottom first on the other one and then I see hey, it's better to do it on that side so I can I won't see it as much when it's done 
So to construct it, I'm going to place the, the bottom piece of chipboard that was four inches by 10 and a quarter against the long edge of the last large piece. I'm going to measure one of my one inch strips, cut it to size. You don't have to be exact precise, but you don't want to have any overhang. And I also tapered from my score line to the outside edge to reduce the bulk in the corners of your box. And when I've done that, I remove the tape backing and I'm lining up the um, score line with the overlapping of the two chipboard pieces. So where they come together, that's where you want to have your score line. And here you can see it's still a little bit wet of the undo that I've tried to use, but I've decided just to go with it how it is. So when the strip is placed, I'm burnishing it and then I fold on that score line. That just makes it the process when you have to attach all the pieces. A little bit easier if that line um, that fold is already folded and scored or burnished. So I try to see if I can line up the chipboard edges and then I burnish it. And then I'm placing the other large piece against the other side of the bottom. And actually I'm going to repeat it, but um, it was quite large and my workspace isn't so big. So I've decided first to check if everything was going to fit on there. And luckily it did. So you're going to place your side panels on the smaller side of the bottom. And do the same thing with the strips. So you cut them to size, taper them, fold on your score lines. And this... This way of doing it for me is the easiest way. I'm not saying it's the best way, but uh, yeah, I think this is well easy to do and it comes together pretty quick. So now we have to make sure all the pieces attach. So I'm just choosing to do it on the side panels, but you can also do it on the larger panels. I'm just cutting strips to size. Uh, you need four of them. And where you are going to place them halfway on that chipboard piece so you're going to line up your score line with the cut edge of the chipboard and here uh, i'm removing the tape backing halfway just a little over the score line uh, because i didn't want, it, want them to stick to my work surface and i wanted to place all the strips at once so uh, i could just go when they were all on there i just could put the box together so try to line up that score line with the cut edge and give that a burnish. And do that on the other side as well. Then you can remove the tape backing. And I'm just trying to fold on that score line a little bit so it's a little bit easier. And I'm doing the same thing on the other side. And then I'm going to lift up the front panel. And I'm going to try to line up my chipboard uh, edges to a 90 degree corner. And then I'm going to stuck that strip down. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Just make sure you don't stick anything where you don't want it. Again, line up those chipboard pieces to a 90 degree angle. And just take your time like I'm doing. And then I've placed it down and give those strips a burner so you get a good stick. And then you are going to repeat that process with the back panel. So again, I'm just removing the stay backings. Try to fold those uh, strips in, hinges, however you want to call them. And then carefully fold over that back panel. And here you have to be a little bit careful that your strip doesn't stick, especially on the last side. Here it was a little bit hard for me to get the whole piece lined up over the length. Um, so I really had to get my hands in there, push that strip down to get it where I want it. And then when everything is in place, again, turn it over and burnish those strips. And this is 
uh, it's quite sturdy now, but not sturdy enough. So we also have to do the outside, but I will do that in the next video. I will post it as soon as it's done. Um, but this is the base of the box and now we are going to repeat this process for the lid. Now for the lid you're going to need a piece that's 10 and a half by 4 and a quarters and you might even want to make it a little bit bigger than that. And then you're going to need two pieces, pieces 1 inch by 10 and a half and two pieces 1 inch by 4 and a quarters. Now you, mu you might want to make that like 10 and 3 quarters instead of 10 and a half because my lid is pretty tight. And I don't mind, but um, yeah, just to be sure. Or you can make it like 10 and 5 eighths. And then you have to make all those pieces uh, 10 and 5 eighths instead of 10 and a half. So again, I'm just repeating it. I'm just placing the longer strips against the long side of the top of the lid and placing one of those one inch strips. Now here I had a little bit of trouble full, um, following the score line with that uh, where they come together the pieces of chipboard uh, but it turned out okay and i'm going to do the same thing with the smaller pieces lining it up against the smaller side of the top of the lid so cut those pieces to size again and taper them and don't throw away all your scrap pieces from your strips that you use on the bigger part because you can really use them on this lid you, because you will need a couple of one inch pieces so don't throw anything away that's larger than one inch and uh, yeah just save them until you're done with the construction i used about uh, i think between 22 and 24 strips for the whole construction of the box So here again I'm pre-folding all those score lines. It's just, it just makes it a little bit easier on here. As you can see I need some really small pieces. So I'm going to cut four pieces that are about one inch. Maybe a little smaller than that. And also this one I'm going to taper. So they are going to look a little bit funny. But all of that to reduce the bulk in the corners. And here as you can see I'm using my scrap pieces of the strips that I've already used. So this time I'm placing them on the larger side so it doesn't really matter where you place them just what works for you. Again lining up that score line with the cut edge of the chipboard. And then here I already stuck that lid, uh, yeah, make that construction complete. So on the other side I have to do it on the smaller side. I place the little hinges on the smaller side of the lid. Again just make sure that you have a 90 degree angle on your chipboard and burnish those um, hinges down. And then repeat the same thing on the other side and then actually the base of your box is finished now what we have to do is clean up the outside make it more sturdy and uh, place decorative paper on there so this is the quick construction for the box and in the next video i will uh, continue with it and work on the outside of the box so thank you for watching and enjoy the rest of your day see you in the next video